50 arch. 50 off what? Food. Oh, really? Yes. If you go there and eat there. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh oh, morning. is anybody here? Hello. Anybody home? <laughs> okay, good morning. It's a tough morning for us. It's Thursday, July 11. It's 7 11. Oh, Clarissa Rose. Yeah, it's her birthday today, Clarissa Rose. Okay, well, so today the gospel comes from St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 to 15. So remember how yesterday, yesterday we were reading about who in the gospels? Yesterday. The apostles, right? And where the gospel we were reading yesterday... St. Matthew names all of the apostles. Okay? Name them one by one. And, and we were commenting about their calling and their mission. And how we also um, are called by virtue of our baptism to be uh, apostles of Jesus Christ. So today, the continuation of that gospel from yesterday. Today, Jesus gives the apostles um, some more instructions of what to do okay and he tells them cure the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers drive out demons okay without cost you received without cost you give see very interesting right you you received all of this good stuff all of this good doctrine from me without any fee you didn't have to pay for it you received it for free now do the same to others right minister to others uh, for free uh, do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts no sack for your journey or a second tunic or sandals a walking stick the laborer deserves his keep meaning that well uh, the apostles had to live a spirit of poverty right they had to live a spirit of poverty and just freely give and and they would be uh, provided for Basically, by the people they minister to, they will find the support uh, from the community. And uh, in many cases, this is still the way that uh, clergy in many parts of the world uh, live their lives and live their ministry. Okay? They are dependent on the, uh, the generosity of the people that they minister to. Of course, here in the United States, it's a little different. Here they, the priests receive some salary of sorts. But then again, it's still, uh, it's still a, uh, uh, a consequence of contributions from uh, people who show appreciation and, and, uh, and, uh, and gratitude for um, the ministry of the priests and, and the clergy. But anyway, uh, for this particular commentary, I'd like to, I'd like to um, put emphasis on the last part of this gospel because this is what applies to us more um, um, specifically our lord said and you know he, he warned the apostles you're not going to be welcome everywhere there are places where you're not going to be welcome but jesus gave a stern uh, uh, and disturbing warning <laughs> Hi, Eva, uh, to those places and those people who do not welcome the apostles and the preaching that they do um, because people who do not welcome such preaching are not unwelcoming of the person of the apostles they are more uh, uh, um, they're, they're not welcoming the preaching of Jesus Christ the teachings that Christ wanted them to hear they, they reject what Christ wanted them to hear and what did our Lord say about those people? Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town, shake the dust off your, from, from your feet, because, amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Okay, remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Eh? Those were the towns that God destroyed 
by raining down fire and brimstone, scorching those towns with fire, eh? Because, because of what? Why did God punish the people of those towns? <clears throat> because what, Joe? They were bad. Because they were bad? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Because they lived very immoral lives, right? Eh? They lived very immoral lives. And despite all the uh, warnings that they were given, well, they did not repent. And so, who was living around there? From the Old Testament uh, characters that you want, huh? Lot. Who was Lot? The nephew, of the nephew of Abraham. Very good, right? The nephew of Abraham. And so, uh, God warned him, okay, get out of there because I'm going to punish that town, right? And so, he got out in time, but there was one of his family that didn't follow instructions because God said never look back the angel said never look back and there was one person who looked back and saw and because of her curiosity wanted to see okay what's happening there and she was turned into a pillar of salt who was that wife. the wife of Lot right so you have to be very careful about disobeying instructions right because there will be bad consequences when you disobey especially disobey God Okay, so anyway, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah got punished, people in that town. And so our Lord said, but you see, yeah, I punished the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and they, they all perished, right? But he's warning us here. But you people, you future generations, if you do not listen to my word, as preached by the apostles who I commissioned to teach you, who I commissioned to baptize all peoples in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are going to have it worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Those are very scary words, right? <laughs> are very scary words. But our Lord does not mean to scare us. Our Lord just wants to tell us <clears throat> that there will be dire consequences if we are not faithful if we do not live up to our calling as children of god there will be consequences and the consequence of course would be hell right the ultimate consequence would be hell and of course hell hell fire the fire and punishment in hell is going to be worse than all the burning that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah that is what our Lord is trying to tell us here See? so uh, lesson we need to learn from this particular gospel is that well our Lord expects us those of us who are fortunate to hear his word those of us who are fortunate to be beneficiaries of the revelation of God we have the responsibility to live up to our baptismal calling to become faithful children of God. I mean, you know, these people in Sodom and Gomorrah, they did not know Jesus Christ. They had no benefit of the revelation of God the way Jesus Christ had revealed God to us. They, so to a certain extent, you might even think, well, maybe, you know, you can't really blame them completely if they were living immoral lives. Well, that's just, of course, our way of rationalizing it, right? But, uh, of course, everybody's responsible for his own immorality. But, I mean, compared to those people, we who now live uh, in this era where it's impossible not to know Jesus Christ and it's impossible not to know about God because of the revelation that Jesus has uh, uh, given us, then we are really more fortunate we know God more than the people of Sodom and Gomorrah we know more about the will of God than the people of Sodom and Gomorrah that is why our Lord said to you to these people who do not listen to the preaching of the Apostles they will have it worse right because they had the benefit of knowing God the way that God was revealed to us by Jesus Christ okay so because we had that benefit, we know God more. We know who God is versus the people of Sodom and Gomorrah who 
hardly knew anything. Well, then we have a bigger responsibility to live up to our baptismal calling. We have a bigger responsibility to be faithful to God. Okay? So perhaps this is a good time to examine ourselves and look at the realities around us and ask ourselves, well, how am I living up to my uh, baptismal calling to be a son and a daughter of God in His church? How am I fulfilling my Christian calling? See? Am I being faithful? Am I being faithful to the teachings of Jesus Christ, which I had received through through the church, right? We received all of this through the church, which is, which is the instrument that God has created to minister to us, not only sacramentally, but also minister the Word of God, right? So we are beneficiaries of this very, very big gift of faith. Now, here I'd like to make you think, and, 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 and you folks listening to us, think about, you know, politicians nowadays who proclaim themselves to be Catholic, yet they're the first ones who promote abortion, euthanasia. They're the ones who support all the, uh, all the uh, wrong lifestyles from, uh, uh, from the um, LGBTQRSTUVWXYZ kind of lifestyle of people, okay? Uh, all of these people are, are not living up to the teachings of the church and not living up to their Catholic faith. And they are, in fact, fighting uh, the Catholic faith. Think of all the nominal Catholics who say they are Catholic yet they don't practice their Catholic faith. They don't go to Mass, they don't pray, they don't do anything. Think of all those teenagers who, after leaving home and go to the university, start to lose their faith. See? Think of all of those um, People who commit abortion, who promote abortion, who are um, very liberal in their lifestyle, yet they're Catholics, like they, they call themselves Christian. See, there is a very big disconnect in this world nowadays between those, uh, among those people who proclaim outwardly, proclaim a faith in God, yet they live completely opposite lives okay? that their, their 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 so called faith is not reflected in the way that they live their lives so let us not be among those let us strive every day to really be faithful to our baptismal calling to really be faithful to god to really be faithful in living up to our dignity as children of god so that we may merit the reward that our Lord has promised okay, to those who are faithful. And so that instead of, instead of the warning that, uh, that our Lord said here, to be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than from that town, we would instead hear our Lord say, Come, come, you, you faithful uh, and, and, uh, and um, merit the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is now open for you because you have been faithful uh, in your life. So, uh, to those to whom much have been given, much will be required. Right? Our Lord said that too. So, to us who have, been, who have benefited much from the revelation of Jesus Christ, from, from uh, introducing us to, to God, to the Blessed Trinity, and to all the good stuff, uh, that God, that Jesus Christ has come to reveal on earth, all of us who are beneficiaries of this, okay, we have received a lot. And so from us, a lot will also be required. And that a lot there really just means be faithful. That we have to be faithful to our baptismal calling. We have to be faithful and show that fidelity and devotion to God in every day of our lives, every day in everything we do. Okay, that's it for us, folks. We're off to Mass this morning.
Oh, hello, Jess. Dr. Stanislao from the Philippines is on the on this video. Hi. <laughs> we missed you when we went to the Philippines, Jess. We missed you last month. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll go to Mass now. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Tomorrow again. Bye-bye.